everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be taking you guys around my two-year-old's bedroom. I feel like it's not called a nursery anymore, so we're just gonna call it a bedroom. She's so grown up, it makes me sad and super excited at the same time. We were gonna try to film with her in the room. Cut to that. Duffy, okay. Duffy, Duffy, Duffy. We'll see. And are we gonna be able to film this? I don't know. What? Huh? Yeah, but that didn't work out. So the space is finally completed and I wanna show you why I picked certain items to be in this room. They're all very intentional. We use this room for certain things and it's not really a playroom. So I'm gonna talk more about that later in the video. If you guys are new here and you're not already subscribed, click that red button down below. I post here every single week. And if you're curious, I actually just did a playroom tour like just a couple weeks ago, which I will link for you down below. All right, let's get started because we are on a time limit until Sage realizes we've left the room and starts looking for us. Oh, okay. <laughs> Scary part and trolls. So this room is a little bit bigger than her last room and if it looks similar, it's because we used a lot of the same pieces in her big girl room. She still has a crib, so I guess it's kind of still a nursery. I don't know, is it a nursery until they have a real bed? I don't know, but there is no rush in my mind to move her to a bed. She sleeps so good and she can't escape that yet, so we're not doing a big bed just yet. When you come in, I did a very similar setup to the last room because I liked it, I had the pieces, so I thought I would reuse them. I love the idea of a little mirror. It's got a little hat hanging up here, a little rainbow that she tries to pull down. We have our diaper caddy here, which still comes in handy. We just don't do diaper changes on top of the dresser because she would probably just stand up and like pull everything down. The differences of a newborn and a two-year-old, like, I used to think a newborn was hard. She's crazy. So here I have her swim diapers, her regular diapers, her nighttime diapers. I think we just ran out and lots of wipes, wipes and diapers at all times. We have a station downstairs as well because sometimes we're doing changes up here, sometimes downstairs. We do wanna start potty training soon, but we just haven't crossed that bridge yet. Up here we have these beautiful wooden floating shelves or like kind of floating. They have these leather straps here. And I got this from a local Canadian company. They make beautiful things. They have an Etsy shop. I'll link them down below. On top, we have similar things to last time, a little acorn book, because if you know, I used to call her baby acorn when she was in my belly. Some little wooden animals there. And then here, this is like more for me to look at when I'm in the room, because she can't really reach here. Uh, we have a little photo of her, a newborn photo shoot, like, what? She's so tiny and just a little pea, like seriously so small. And then we have a little ultrasound photo of her. And then this is just a little birth engravement that has her name, her birthday, her weight, her length, and just says, hello baby. I think we use these for her newborn photos and just really cute. So that's there, mostly for mommy and daddy, but it's sentimental and I like it. She's got some of her jewelry in here. On her actual dresser, we have it very simple. We just have her white noise machine, which we use every single nap and bedtime. We have this little cloud humidifier. I've gotten so many questions about it and I have found a link. We love this. We've had this since she was a newborn, especially during like cold and flu season. It is so great to have a humidifier in the room. I usually just have it on low uh, when she's sleeping. It just helps bring in some moisture into the air, especially during the dry winter months. We're here we just have like some of her toiletries, lotion, sunscreen, diaper cream, brushes, thermometer, booger sucker, the essentials. Our newest addition to the space is this little doily gallery wall. I don't know what to, I kind of want to do bubbles. That was my uh, inspo here. And my mom actually gave me this idea. I got these little wooden rounds from Michael's. I'll see if I can find something similar. And they were very inexpensive. And then these are actually hand knitted doilies from my vovó from Portugal. We actually have a bunch of travel vlogs. I'll link them down below. But I brought these back and I decided just to feature them in her room. That way there's just something from my grandparents in the room and I just think about them and how much I miss them because they are overseas living their best life in Portugal. But I didn't want to actually cut them so I just was strategic. Some of them I left out, some of them I wrapped in, but you could totally just get like doilies from anywhere. They don't have to be from your vovó and have them displayed like this. And I just love the blush colors and it already goes with the room. So it kind of just made sense to put them in. So thanks Gigi for giving me this idea. The first time Sage saw these, she was like, oh, 
like they notice when things are new in their room and like, you know, so decoration isn't just for you. Like they really do pay attention, trust me. A crucial part of the room, we have a hamper. This is really handy to have. And if you notice, we actually don't have the diaper pail in here anymore. As they get older, their poops stink and this room was just starting to smell. So we actually moved that to the garage. We still use it and we definitely put all the poopy diapers in there cause they just like, wow, they clear a room real quick. But yeah, now it's in the garage, which is great. No smelly room anymore. And she has way less poopy diapers. So it's not as much of a need to have it like right here next to us. And then over on this wall, we have this beautiful watercolor rainbow. I like to joke around and say that I painted it. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people believe me. So thank you, I'm flattered. But no, this is actually a peel and stick wallpaper. I love these. They do not damage the wall. They're so easy to put up. If you remember from Sage's nursery we had this beautiful mural one and it was gorgeous it was more of a like a nursery style one so I wanted to do something a little bit more mature and grown up not that she is you know taken on the world yet but I loved this the soft palette and it just brought some color to the room and let me tell you the first time she walked in and saw this she was so excited I have I'll put in a clip but she was like whoa it was the cutest thing ever they have so many beautiful prints and this one is absolutely beautiful in person so easy to put up and then you can easily peel it off if you need to move it or just you know you want to paint your room change up the style it's easy peasy above her crib we have her name and i just i put it higher than in her last room because she can obviously reach higher and so things you want to think about when you're creating their space is like what don't you want them to reach at or climb and she doesn't even think about grabbing this because it's not low enough for her. And I just attached this with 3M stickers, like the Velcro ones, so it doesn't damage the wallpaper. And I just, I love it. And when you walk in, I just, it looks like it's a part of the wallpaper. And then this crib, we actually got secondhand. It's a Stokey crib. We love it. It does turn into a toddler bed. Now that I think about it, I forgot. It expands and I think this part comes out, but once again, then she'll be able to escape and bug us in the middle of the night and I'm just not ready for that, okay? I'm just enjoying my 12 hours of sleep. No, she's sleeping 12 hours. I'm sleeping like if I don't go to bed too late, hopefully eight. But if you know, you know, like it's a whole ordeal once they start being able to like leave their bedroom. So we have it still enclosed, little baby jail. Um, inside we just have some like pillows and stuffies. She doesn't sleep with a pillow yet. I think I heard it's usually recommended after they're three, they don't really need one, but she sleeps in a sleep sack. So no blankets or anything yet. And she'll usually bring in a stuffy to bed actually always stuffies are necessary over here we have the same setup as before a little basket with a macrame super affordable i got these both off of amazon put in some stuffies and then over here this is actually really really special this was handmade by matt's mom when sage was born it just we had no space for it in her other room because it was such a small space and we got it like after the nursery was done so i knew i wanted to find us a home for it in this room and it actually fits perfectly because it says twinkle twinkle little star which is the nursery that we sing to sage every single night before bed and it just says when she was born and she handmade this and then just framed it it's so beautiful, I love it, and it's just a special addition to the room. The curtains I have here are the same ones that were in her nursery. The only thing I added were these really cute beads. They're just wooden beads that have a magnetic closure. So it's great if we just wanna pull them back and tie them. She also likes to play with them. These ones here are a semi blackout curtain. They're from Ikea, but I don't know if they have these exact same ones anymore. And then we have these sheer ones also from Ikea just to do a layering effect. To be honest, most of the time, these curtains are closed just because, you know, between naps and bedtime, we need the room dark. It's really nice once in a while to let some light in and you know, actually enjoy the room. And then over here, we have this beautiful wooden bookshelf. I've shown it a little bit on Instagram and I've had so many people be like, where is that from? I will link the Etsy account down below and I'm gonna have a full blog post as well with photos and details on everything. So check the info box for that. This is beautiful. We've already been using this for months and it was actually one of the first things we got for this room besides the wallpaper. And what I love about it is that it has these abacus beads. So not only is it a great storage place for books, so they can, you know, your little ones can easily pull out the books. Everything is displayed and shown. I find the bookshelves that are like this, it's hard to see the books and this is so easy to visually see it. I think this is more of a Montessori style bookshelf. It's at their level so they can easily access it. And she loves books. We try to do one at least every single night before bed. And I love these abacus beads because it's just like a fun addition that 
they can play around with. And I think this is removable if you don't wanna have the abacus beads. Very well made. And this is gonna be like a piece that she has forever. This series is really cute, the Pout Pout Fish. Um, they're a little bit long, but it is a good story and they have good rhymes. Oh, I love this one. Sweet child of mine, cause I feel like it looks like Sage. Oh, this is like the fastest bedtime story ever. If you just need a really quick, quick read, the going to bed book like five seconds and it does the trick. Um, speaking of books, if you guys do not have a copy yet of the Baby Health Nut Cookbook, it is a digital cookbook that I created with all the recipes I fed my daughter Sage from six months and up. She is now over two. We still cook from that book and it is a family friendly, baby tested and approved cookbook with so many recipes. There's over 30. There's also tips and tricks on how to create a adventurous eater. We've sold thousands of copies already to so many beautiful families and there are a lot of five-star review ratings um, that we've received. So I'm just so happy you guys are enjoying it and I just want to uh, mention it. If you guys have not picked up a copy, it's still available. I'll link it down below. I've been obsessed with this rug for years. I saw it on another blogger's um, website and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It wasn't cheap, but it is beautiful. It is shedding a little bit right now because it's a fully wool rug. But once you take the vacuum, it doesn't like shed like um, like little pieces that go all over you. It just balls up here and there. So you just take the vacuum and it clears it out. Um, but it is a natural fiber, which I love. It has a sort of pebble look to it and it's absolutely beautiful. It's so soft on the feet, really nice if you're kneeling. And as soon as we rolled this out and Sage got to put her like toes on it, she just loved the sensory experience. So, you know, that's something I'm also thinking about this room. Visually, are there colors and textures and things that will just ignite her different senses? And this rug is like perfect for their little feet to really like touch and have that sensory experience. And then this last corner of the room, which by the way, I wanna mention, if you haven't noticed yet, there's actually no toys in this room. Besides books and stuffies, there's no like, loud toys, anything that really lights up and is battery operated. She does have some books that make noise and sing and stuff, but that was intentional. So that way when she's in this room, she knows it's for like quiet time, resting and sleeping, hopefully. Cause if she's sleeping and she, this is the same room that she's playing in, she might be like, oh, I wanna play with that truck or that toy across the room. That was very intentional. And I know other people do that too, but it, it has really worked well for us. Just a recommendation if you're thinking about what to add to the space, um, that's just kind of what we've done and it's worked well. Okay, so we have two new additions to this room recently. As she's been getting older, we've been really kind of leaning into the Montessori style and just like that independence. Uh, when they're young, they love to do things on their own. And obviously it's hard to like, for them to be doing things and it can be dangerous. Um, but having things that are built for their level and their age is so helpful. So she'll use this little basin for things like brushing her teeth, brushing her hair, looking at herself. And it's just, it's at her level. She can put things on here. Um, this is actually removable. You can put some water in here and she loves it. She can just like dip her toothbrush in there. This company is the same one as the table and chair set in her playroom. So if you guys don't know, that turns into many different things. And so does this. All their pieces grow with your kid. This I think changes into a shelf and this mirror, I mean, you can use for anything. And I just love this little corner because I didn't know what to do with it. And now it's a functional part of our bedtime routine. And now on this side, well, actually behind me, it's just her closet, but like that's boring and it's messy. It's not as cute as her newborn one, but we'll just ignore that. Over here, we have a little open concept closet for her where she has some items hung which is really nice for her to be able to visually see her clothes and a lot of times I'll say you know do you want to wear this sweater or this sweater and she has the option to make a decision and choose what she wants to wear it's really easy for her to grab this comes with some hangers that they can't pull off which is handy and then she's got her robe here, which she loves to put on in the morning before she comes downstairs. And then underneath, uh, we just have a little section here with some slippers, her purse that, you know, it's just for fun, a blanket and, you know, extra storage on top. Just very beautiful, high quality. And I didn't think Sage was gonna love something like this. And she really will come up here. And a lot of times she'll pull a lot of things off, but they're learning and eventually she'll be able to hopefully dress herself and be able to pick out her outfit for the day. So that's pretty much it for this room. Like I said, I'm gonna have a full blog post with all the photos and links and everything to everything I mentioned down below in the info box. So definitely check that out. But this room is just really special. Um, we love to play and read 
and sometimes we'll dance and just hang out in here and or if she's having a big feeling downstairs we come up here and she's just really able to reset in this room and she just really really enjoys it so it's fun to have a separate room that's not the playroom that can just be a little bit more mindful playing and that's what this room is all right i gotta go check on sage thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one have a fabulous day bye guys